Welcome, Generation Iron fans. Nick Trujillo here, bringing you guys a special broadcast about the 2019 Olympia qualification list. So right behind me on my marker board, I have all the names that are currently qualified for the Mr. Olympia, and I have three names to my left that are currently on the point system, and they're leading the point system for qualification. So with that being said, and not hold you guys out for any more, because I know you guys are so excited for this video, we have Sean Roden, Phil Heath, Rolly Winkler, William Bonac, Brandon Curry, Dexter Jackson, Clarence DeVis, Max Charles, Steve Kuklo, Juan Morrell, Josh Lenardowitz, Patrick Moore, and John Della Rosa. Now, I have an X right next to Phil Heath's name. Why? Because most likely Phil Heath is not going to be in this show. And I'm 99.999% sure he will not be competing this year. So, that being said, another name we're going to add to the list that's not going to be competing, most likely, is Big Rami. Big Rami obviously is not qualified yet. He placed out of the top five last year in the Mr. Olympia. So he had to do a show, and the only show that was left for him was the Tampa show. We don't see him prepping right now for that show. So, most likely we'll not have a Big Rami in this year's Olympia. So that being said, having two big dogs that could have obviously potentially won the Olympia again, Phil Heath, and obviously a front runner, Big Rami, it leaves us to a couple names. That being said, you have Sean Roden, William Bonac, Brandon Curry, Dexter Jackson, and Rolly Winkler as your front runners right now for the 2019 Mr. Olympia. In this video, I want to break down why I believe they're going to place where they are. And why? Because some people are going to place later in the, in, uh, you know, later in the pack. So, my front runner for this Olympia is going to be Brandon Curry. The reason I have Brandon Curry in the front running position, right here, I'm going to put my picks for you guys. A nice orange pen. B. Curry, number one. Now, the reason I have Brandon Curry in the front is because A. He's made the most improvements this year. B. He is bringing in the, the absolute co most complete package to the stage um, outside of one other guy, and that is Sean Roden. Now, the reason I'm picking Brandon Curry over Sean Roden is because he is just extra bigger everywhere that Sean Roden isn't, upper body especially. He's got massive biceps, massive triceps, massive delts, big full chest. Um, his back is obviously comparable to Sean's. Um, I would say, if anything, Sean has a little more detail, but Brandon has a lot more mass to his back. So these guys are going to battle it out for shot for shot. But in the end, I think Brandon Curry is going to overcome our reigning champion right now, Sean Roden. And it's nothing against Sean. And I'm not doing it to believe into the hype. I'm doing this because I predicted this after I saw Brandon Curry win the Arnold. After Brandon Curry won the Arnold, he, gave, he showed up with a package that I believe could have won the Olympia then. And now he's given himself, now give him another six months to prepare for the Olympia. It's going to be a very dangerous package, especially with the photos that we've been seeing him release now over in Kuwait with his coach, Abdullah. Um, there's really nothing to sit, sit here and say, oh, wow, Brandon needs to work on this or anything. He's going to bring conditioning. We know that. That's not something we have to worry about. It's just if how good is Sean going to be at this show. That's what we have to worry about. So in second place, I'm going to give it to Sean Roden. And... Because I do believe Sean Roden has the fire and the tenacity to bring a physique that will place possibly first again, if not second. Now, a lot of people are going to put him in like third, fourth, fifth place. I'm not going to insult the reigning champion like that because Sean Roden is Sean Roden for a reason. He brings a perfect X frame. His symmetry is unbelievable. His conditioning is usually spot on. There's really nothing to obviously pull away from him either, but... His upper body does lack the muscle maturity and the muscle density as some of these other guys in the lineup, like Rolly Winkler or Dexter. Um, even if you go down the line, even like a Josh Lenardowitz or a Patrick Moore, I think even be bigger up upper upper body wise. But when it comes to Sean lower body, it's it's you know it's tier one level legs. I mean, his legs are really the ones that that carry him over into the points. Um, as far as upper body goes, a lot of detail, just not the mass that you usually see on these guys. But he will bring an exceptional package. He will bring the crisp conditioning. His presentation on stage is second to none. He can pose very well. 
So if something doesn't even look as well as someone else, he could probably outpose them and make the illusion look better. Um, like I said, guys, this is an art. When you get on stage, you present yourself. It does really matter at the end of the day when it comes down to this close to placings. You know, everything is looked at. Everything is and everything is ridiculed. So when these guys get on stage, every little thing counts. You know, that little that little oomph to the turn. You know, it makes a big difference for your arm or shoulder or back. So. Third place, I am going to put, I know this might, I might get yelled at for this, but I have a big belief that Roy Winkler will outshine the rest of this pack, even though the way he showed up to Arnold and the other Australian Arnold. But I have Roy Winkler in third place. Now, the only reason Roy Winkler was out of sync these last two shows was because obviously it was a short prep and he got over a knee injury. He wasn't even training his legs. I don't know if you guys know that or not, but he was lacking in the leg department, obviously. His conditioning was off. He just was not the normal Rolly Winkler we're used to seeing, especially after the showing we just saw at the previous Olympia where he was spectacular. It was one of the best Rollies we've possibly ever seen. He could have obviously won the Olympia last year. A lot of people, a lot of critics had him winning over Phil. So that being said, I know Rolly's going to bring it to the Olympia. He is a guy that is a, in the dog fight. He does not. He is relentless. He will not let Roy Winkler show up again out of shape. And like I said, he wanted to do those shows for his fans. He wanted to do the shows for himself. So that's why he showed up and did those shows. I'm sure at the end of the day, if he had the choice where he was like, oh, if I do I look my best, should I do the shows? He probably wouldn't have done it. You know? So as being a professional he was, he showed up and did them, even though he wasn't 100%. But Roy with the freaky upper body, freaky legs, freaky everybody part, as long as he comes in shape, which he has been, and if he, if he even duplicates last year's package, which, which would be exceptionally well, which is a 98.9% a package, that's going to be very dangerous. This, this, this could get really messed up messed up right here. It could be a battle between Brandon and Roley. It could be a Roley show, you know, if Brandon shows up a little off. So this is going to be very, very, very close. These top three is going to be exceptionally close. So I'm really excited to see this, this go down and everything else is going to fall into place. So, that being said, we have a fourth place finisher, and that's going to go to Dexter Jackson. Now, the reason I'm saying Dexter, and if it wasn't any, if it was any other time than this year, I would say Dexter's probably fifth or sixth, possibly lower. I'm putting a lot of faith into Dexter because this possibly is his last show. He's probably going balls to the wall. He has Charles Glass in his corner. George Farrer will be there this year for him because George Farrer was not there last year. Dexter did not place well at all. I think it was one of his worst placings ever last year. So he has a lot to prove to himself, especially number one. And number two, to everyone else, that he is the best and will always be the best in the world. Dexter, number one issue was his legs. His legs are obviously of downsized since he got older. Um, it's the number one thing we see go down on guys that are older in bodybuilding. And Dexter's pushing 50 years old. I mean, come on. Give him a little slack. But still. You're still being compared to guys that are in their 20s and 30s and, and early 40s. So you have to compete with them, regardless of your age. So I believe Dexter's going to bring in a package that we've probably never seen before. And I believe it could possibly move up higher for him. So I'm not doubting that he could place fourth or higher. Um, like I said, this is going to get really crazy intense. Because all these guys are very, 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 very good. And all have beaten each other once before or the other. So... Everybody's beatable. This is not like a Phil Heath show where when Phil Heath shows up, no one's beat him. Or a, or a Jay Cutler or a Ronnie Coleman. This is all could be mashed up. This could be completely off. I could have Dexter Jackson first. He did win the Mr. Olympia. Remember that. He did beat the Jay Cutler of 2008. So this is going to be very, very, very competitive, like I said. All this could get mashed up and be completely opposite of what I have it. But this is just my prediction. Um... Fifth place, unfortunately, I'm going to have William Bonach. And I, I I really like William's physique, but in a lineup like this, you got to have symmetry. It's going to be it's going to be down to the small waist contest. I know, unfortunately, I don't like that because bodybuilding is not all about small waist. I'm sorry. Yes, it's a focal point of the physique, but it shouldn't be judged just because you have a small waist, okay? It should be part of the judging, okay? Um, I'm going to squeeze his name in down here. Sorry, William. No offense. I didn't mean to put you down here. My handwriting sucks. But William, fifth place. Only reason I have William in fifth place, like I said, these guys all are masters of symmetry. 
Yes, even Roy Winkler now. Roy Winkler was out of that question a long time, a couple years ago. <laughs> he did not have a physique where I would say, oh, Roy Winkler's got a small waist. Now he does, okay? So he is in the conversation now with small waist and symmetry when it comes down to Dexter, Sean, and Brandon. Is he the most symmetrical guy out of this pack? Obviously not, but he does show symmetrical um, characteristics to his physique now with the small waist, big shoulders, big, now he has sweeps on his legs. Um, he could stand next to these guys. William, on the other world, in the other world, is a stocky, um, very compact, so much muscle on him that he kind of is like the, the fifth wheel here, essentially. So they're going to see all four of these guys with these crazy waists, crazy symmetry, um, po lats popping out from the front. And then you have William, who's kind of compact, so much muscle on top of muscle. He doesn't know where to even put it anymore. It's just gonna not. It's gonna stand out compared to these. Whether it could stand out in a good way, I'm not sure, or be a bad way. But with the consistency of these four guys, in my eyes, it's gonna stand out as an eyesore. So that's why I put him here. He's like a Kai Green, you know, stupid, stupidly muscled everywhere. Um, obviously, it shows conditioning. Neil Hill brings him in razor sharp every time. We never seen William really off. We saw a little. Not. I hate using this word. Distension. I'm gonna use the word bloated in his stomach last year, and maybe that was just over carb up or a food manipulation issue. But that was the only thing to knock on William. But when that's off a little bit, it throws off all the symmetry of his body because his mid midsection is so short. So he has to be very careful with that this year. He doesn't need to be any fuller than he is. He's probably full when he's flat. So carving him up should not be an issue. I'm sure he looks great flat too. So that being said, that's my top five guys. So now sixth place on is going to be a big toss-up where I would not want to gamble my money. I would put money on this lineup, one through five for you, but six on, I don't know. So let's cross out the names that we used already. Roden, Phil, Roley, William, Brandon, Dexter. That's it. Okay, let me get a new marker here. Now, my top, my top five is clear and decisive. I'm pretty confident in that. Six on, like I said, is going to be a toss-up. So this is a new name in the lineup, Clarence DeVies. Um, very, very similar physique to William Bonock, a Kai Green-looking guy. Um, I don't mean that in a, like a, any way possible except for good, in a good way because lots of muscle, stocky, huge back, huge legs. Um, really, really, really impressive. Really impressive. But I'm not sure how well he's going to do because he's shorter. Next to some of these guys like Juan Morrell, Steve Kuklo, Max Charles, Patrick Moore, Josh. All these guys are very tall. Akeem Williams, Luke, Cedric. You know, John Del Rosa and Clarence are probably a similar height. If I had to guess, I have no idea how tall they are. But if I had to guess, they're on the shorter end. So these two guys are going to have a rough time against the rest of these guys because all these guys are tall. Now, that being said, that's if Luke and Cedric show up um, on the points. I'm going by yes if these three guys go. Akeem Williams obviously most likely going to be in there. Um, he's obviously qualified. I don't think anyone. No, I don't think it's possible for anyone to pass him now. So you're going to have Max Charles is six foot. Steve Kuko is six foot. Patrick Moore is I think five ten, five eleven. Josh is around the same five nine, five ten, five eleven. Juan six foot. So Akeem Williams is five ten. You know these guys are tall. So then you're going to have Clarence and John Del Rosa who are short. That's going to throw a curveball, you know? Like, these guys are going to have a rough time battling out with these giants. It's hard to stand next to someone that's tall and vice versa. It's, it's hard for a tall guy to stand next to somebody short because vice versa, it makes somebody look small or somebody look big. But that being said, I really, 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 really like to see a sixth-place finish from somebody that I've been waiting to see do well, and that's Steve Kuklo. Steve Kuklo has been on the radar for a long time. He has been competing since I've been competing, even like a year or two before me. That's back like 2003 or four. So he's been on the radar for a while to be here. Everyone had big predictions for Steve. So it'd be really, really, really cool to see Steve step it up and hit a sixth place finish. So I'm going to put six here, S. Kuklo. Now with Steve Kuklo placing sixth place, you obviously are going to have um, major competition between seven and eight, and that's probably going to be between Josh and Patrick Moore. Um, 
Max Charles is not more is not complete enough. I don't believe. Yes, he's brought up his legs, but Josh is an exceptional bodybuilder. He's probably gonna give Steve a big headache also. But I probably put John, Josh Lenardowitz in seven. Excuse my handwriting. Now eight. This is a crazy top ten, by the way. Now, <laughs> very crazy top ten because these guys are gonna be very competitive. Now with eighth, I'm probably gonna go with John Del Rosa, even though he's on the shorter end. I, I just the amount of muscle he carries and the way he showed up the last two shows, he's gonna do exceptionally well if he shows up somewhat looking like that or even better. So, I think John will be rounding off the eighth place. Now ninth, this is really gonna get ugly here now because. <laughs> Patrick Moore is an exceptional bodybuilder. His symmetry is unbelievable. And I keep using that word symmetry because a lot of these guys now are bringing it. We haven't seen symmetry like this in a long time in bodybuilding. And I, and I mean it. I've been a fan of bodybuilding since I was a kid. I haven't seen this many guys with an X-frame in a long time. So with that being said, Juan Morales is going to bring crazy conditioning. Are they going to choose conditioning over some guy that has really, really, really exceptionally well genetics, you know, frame, structure? Obviously, Patrick Moore is almost uh, as perfect as X-frame as you can get. But Juan Morales' conditioning is obviously superior. He's got that grainy, hard, um, like paper skin, thin, uh, thin skin. Patrick Moore has not achieved that yet. He, he's very conditioned, but he doesn't have that paper skin, thin, skin thin, uh, thin skin. Juan Morales, I believe, is going to overcome him because of conditioning. So I think I'm going to put Juan in nine. Juan's been here before, so I think with the... Seasoned veteran experience, he's gonna outshine Patrick, and that's nothing against Patrick. I think Patrick's physique is insane. And now, in 10th place, I'm gonna put Patrick Moore. Now, there's two names on here that you're probably like, Wow, you don't have them in the top 10 Clarence and Max. My only downside with Clarence is I, I haven't seen him compete recently. Okay, I don't, I don't have much experience seeing him show up to shows. I'm not sure how well he does at the big shows. Max Charles, my downside with him is just his legs are not there yet. They're not Olympia caliber legs. I like Max's upper body. It's superior to anybody on this stage. Lower body is not. It just needs more ham development, more glute development. Now, maybe he did his homework in his offseason because he hasn't competed in a while. So maybe those weak body parts have been brought up and he might shock the world and play sixth place. I don't know. This is just me being... A bodybuilding critic like I am and a, and a journalist and I'm gonna put probably max in 11 or 12 and Clarence 11 or 12 somewhere around there and then whoever else is gonna show up is gonna show up obviously but for now this is my Olympia lineup hold me to it um, big Rami is obviously not in it and we're gonna see how this goes down in September I'm really excited for this year's Olympia um, hopefully I'll be there and see you guys in live coverage for the 2019 Olympia and I just want to say thank you to Generation Iron fans for always watching, always liking, and subscribing all of our channels. Um, and thank again, thanks again. This is Nick Trigilli. Make sure you guys follow me at Nick World Class on Instagram. And this is Nick Trigilli signing out.